If you're into board games, then you've probably got Ticket to Ride and you never play it because it's a bit dull. So let's fix it. Ticket to Ride House Rules. Ticket to Ride is an entry level Euro game. It's known as a gateway game into the Euro game class of game, sometimes known as German board games. The game revolves around building routes from one side of the Europe to the other, or a few different editions of the game give you different maps. This one's a European one. And if we're honest, the basic game is a little bit dull. What it needs is some adrenaline. And how do you get adrenaline into Ticket to Ride? You need tension. So a lot of the problem with Ticket to Ride is that the scoring is done at the end of the game. So you don't really know how close the game is, you kind of get an idea of who's probably going to win. And actually, once you realise that the game ends when you run out of trains, and usually the other person is very close to running out of trains as well, or if it's a, even in a multiplayer game, odds are you're all kind of running out of trains at roughly the same time-ish, which means the winner of the game is nothing to do with the routes, it's who's got the most points per train. So the winner of the game is usually the one who builds the longest single route, such as Stockholm to Petrograd and Palermo to Smyrna. And the other maps have a similar long route somewhere, where you get a lot more points for each carriage placed. Stockholm to Petrograd is 21 points. That's a long route all by itself. So 19 times in 20 when you play Ticket to Ride, the winner of the game is the one who builds Stockholm to Petrograd. That has to change. We need to get rid of this scoring the points at the end of the game because it's removing tension. So let me introduce you to the way we play Ticket to Ride in my house. And it's a totally different game, much more exciting. This is the aftermath of a five player Ticket to Ride game. But these house rules work in two players as well, all the way through, doesn't matter, they'll just work. The big change we're making here is that now we're going to score as we go along and as soon as the first player, the moment they get to 100 or beyond points, game over, they win. So we've got to make a few subtle changes to the scoring. For a start, the longest route in Europe no longer gets 10 points, this is not important to us. And we'll no longer be getting negative points for any uncompleted routes. And instead of costing us four points at the end of the game, any station we build now just costs us four points any time we build one. But there's another more critical change to the game, and that happens in the way the routes work. Each player still gets their own long route, and that's just theirs and only theirs, so we deal that out at the start of the game just like we would any other game. But we no longer deal out the standard tickets. There's going to be a change there that really fundamentally changes this game and makes it so much better. So each player's got their own long route and I'm going to deal four carriage cards. And then that's it for each player's hand at the beginning of the game. And now I'm going to deal out the five cards that go in the middle for all players to use. And, crucially, I'm going to deal out five roots into the middle of the board. Now these roots are for anyone to use. So now as a player I'm looking at my long route and I'm looking at the short route thinking how can I adapt my long route to squeeze in these short routes and can I get there before the opposition? Any time a player completes one of these routes, they get the points on the card and another route is dealt into the middle. And sure, this could already be built. So the points are awarded and another card is dealt. Any time these routes are completed, the points go immediately onto the scoreboard. Even in just a two-player game, every time we've played these rules so far, there has been tension over getting into certain cities first to complete certain routes. Meaning that the game didn't just get tense as we got close to 100 points, but whilst playing, 
there's at least one, sometimes more, critical, nail-biting, tense moments during the game as we're trying to be first into a particular town. And a lot of play features that should have been in Ticket to Ride, such as having to reroute around another player's route, it's in there. It now works properly as a game. So in summary, the tickets are dealt to the middle of the board and anyone can use them. Anytime someone's got the route, as soon as they get them, they score the points. If a card is placed down and that route already exists, even if multiple players have that route, they both score it straight away. And we keep going, we just keep five small tickets in the middle. The whole time each player is trying to complete their own long route because those points are now essential for getting to 100 points before you run out of carriages. And unlike the original game, you're just trying to get your routes down as fast as possible. When do I start building my route? Do I save up for the, the big long connections? There's now a real choice to make because whilst you're building your cards up to get that long route connected, other people are taking routes you desperately need and you're going for some of the same places to make a hundred points. You have to make some of these routes. The result is a nail-biting, intense game with so much adrenaline coursing through your body and a finale that is often extremely close. Before these changes, Ticket to Ride was just a game we had that, you know, we'd probably play something. Now, it's a game we actually seriously consider playing, not just when we've had enough of our main games. This is now one of our main games. We're loving it again. Ticket to Ride, turbocharged, supercharged, and made awesome with just a few subtle rules tweaks. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please consider commenting with your experiences of these rules or even with your own house rule variants and how they play. Try comparing your house rules to our house rules, see what works best. This is a really fun variant of the game and it's worth trying. It is so much fun, you've got to give it a go. If you have this game, if you're into board games, you probably do. And it's probably just sat there, not getting any use. Go play this variant, it's fun.